Yellowstone National Park's natural beauty may seem serene, but it is rooted in a violent volcanic past. Now, geologists have identified which parts of the park are most likely to erupt again someday. Yellowstone's next major eruption will probably be centered on one of three parallel fault zones running north-northwest across the national park, a new study predicts. Two of these regions produced large amounts of lava flows the last time the supervolcano was active, 174,000 to 70,000 years ago, while the third region experienced the most frequent shocks in recent years. Knowing this will help scientists determine which areas of the vast park should be monitored most carefully, said study lead author Guillaume Girard, a visiting professor at Michigan State University in East Lansing. The Yellowstone region is often referred to as a supervolcano because it has spewed more than 240 cubic miles, 1,000 cubic kilometers, of ash and lava in one event. The most recent powerful explosion occurred about 640,000 years ago. Smaller eruptions occur more frequently, Gerard said, but the chance of one erupting in a given year is still less than one in 10,000. He describes these eruptions as lava flows, which are not explosive. They have a very, very high viscosity and the flow is very, very slow. Similar flows have fed the slow-growing lava dome on Mount St. John's. St. Helens in the years after the volcano's major eruption, but Yellowstone's lava flows occurred on a much larger scale. Some of these flows traveled up to 20 miles, 32 kilometers, said Gerard, whose study appears in the September issue of GSA Today. We have never seen a rhyolite eruption of this magnitude in human history. By studying the titanium content in lava flows, Girard's team concluded that the sources of these flows emerged very quickly from magma chambers 4 to 7 miles, 6 to 12 kilometers, deep. The amount of titanium in lava quartz crystals marks the depth of crystal formation from slowly cooling magma. So, if the magma stops at intermediate levels during its ascent, the titanium content in each crystal will vary from the center to the outer edges, like the layers of an onion. However, the crystal did not have such characteristics. This means magma rises quickly to the surface, without a long enough pause at any intermediate level for crystals to grow. Fast, in geological terms, after all. By human standards, the lava rise was probably quite slow, occurring over hundreds or thousands of years. Does this relatively fast magma movement indicate that Yellowstone will soon experience more eruptions? It's not an imminent danger, Gerard said. Every study concludes that there is no magma ready to erupt anytime soon.
Volcanologists at the Institute of Geochemistry and Petrology, at Zurich, Switzerland, found Girard's research very neat, but noted that eruption patterns can also change unpredictably. Girard's research, but then, shifted suddenly to a new location outside the linear zone. 